Hey everyone, it's Jessica and welcome to Critic. We've all been affected by the COVID-19 pandemic in one way or the other. Where I live, we're about to hit its peak within a few weeks. Our ICUs are already crowded, as I'm sure are yours. I'm a strong believer in that we can only get through this together by helping each other in any possible way. So, in this quick video, I go through a simple tool I've created to aid mechanical ventilation and how to use it in our COVID-19 population. You can find the link in the description. Let's go. So, a few things about the COVID-19 ICU population. Let me start out by saying that currently not a lot is known on best practice, so please do your own research and note that the views expressed in this video are subject to change. Now what we do know is that they typically present with primary hypoxemia and develop a form of ARDS with bilateral ground class opacities on the CT scan. It seems that hypercapnia and subsequent respiratory acidosis, when not caused by other illnesses, develop in the ICU. This could either be due to the disease itself, though there currently isn't sufficient evidence for this, or caused by our protective mechanical ventilation, i.e. permissive hypercapnia, or by local hyperinflation due to excessive PEEP, causing compression of pulmonary capillaries and therefore increasing dead space ventilation, but that's something for another video. One thing that seems to be a bit different from your quote-unquote typical ARDS is that some of these patients have a higher pulmonary compliance than what you would expect from your typical ARDS patient. This means that in these patients, you may be able to permit larger tidal volumes for the same driving pressure without compromising the safety aspect of your mechanical ventilation. So personally, I feel that calculating respiratory compliance is of great value in this population. Respiratory system compliance, along with other respiratory mechanics like mechanical power, driving pressure, resistance, etc., can be calculated using the tool I mentioned in order to aid you in safe mechanical ventilation. It's called VentiCalc. Please note that respiratory system compliance is compliance of both the lung and the chest wall. Now, the tool does allow for separate determination of chest wall and lung compliance, however, you would need an esophageal balloon for that. Now, onto the tool. Please remember that every time you change a parameter on the ventilator, you should repeat the inspiratory and expiratory hold. Check your own ventilator on how to perform and record these holds. This patient is ventilated using a volume controlled mode. Start out by filling out the position, meaning either prone or supine, the sex and the height of your patient. Then enter all of the settings of the ventilator. Now you're good to go. First, perform an inspiratory hold and note the plateau pressure. Second, perform an expiratory hold and note the total PEEP, which is the extrinsic or applied PEEP together with the intrinsic PEEP. Enter them in VentiCalc and you get all the respiratory mechanics in order to ensure safe mechanical ventilation. This patient is ventilated using a pressure support or assisted mode. Pro tip, it's more accurate to use the record feature on your ventilator and get the values after you've performed the expiratory hold. So now, perform an expiratory hold and note P nadir. VentiCalc calculates the predicted P mus and the predicted transpulmonary pressure, as proposed by Dr. Bertoni, in order to ensure safe support ventilation link in the description. And that's all for this video. I'm currently in the process with my dear colleague Pim to turn this into an app. We're both firm believers in open source material, so this will always be free of charge and openly available. Now for everyone out there, take good care of one another. And for all of my subscribers, I'll be sure to make a video series on mechanical ventilation after this is all over. Thanks for sticking by.